Okay, so we're going to talk about this multiple pointer pattern, which I have talked a little bit about in a previous video, but this is a variation of it. So you might hear this referred to as multiple pointer pattern or the two pointers technique. In, I'm calling this particular variant, the walls are closing in. If you think of uh, Star Wars, maybe, we're definitely going to get a lot thinner. That's uh, sort of the idea. And the, the other variant that I posted was about a uh, slinky pattern, which is kind of a, a different scenario. But I think this one is a little bit more complicated, but super powerful. And I think that's pretty obvious uh, once we start going through the implementation. So basic little highlights about this pattern, usually pretty easy to implement. The goal often is to get time complexity from quadratic to linear time. And then very common to do this uh, uh, searching for pairs in a sorted array. That's a very common use case. And so our problem description is right here. And we want to write a function called sum0, which accepts a sorted array of integers. And the function should find the first pair where the sum is 0. Now, I didn't include a return type here because I, you know, I'm going to leave that open to interpretation. And I use this optional type, which you might not be familiar with. Um, but essentially, I just created this new class. I called it optional, and it takes a generic parameter, which is the value of the value, essentially. So here's its constructor. We say, OK, create a present Boolean, which for us is just going to indicate whether or not a match was found. If it's true, then this value should be of this type. And if this is false, then this value will be at its default of null. So that's essentially what I wanted to do for a return type here, just because I didn't. I wanted a consistent return type. You could return an array. You could return, you know, false if you don't find one or whatever you want to do. But essentially, what we want to do is find a match uh, so that the sum of the two numbers equals zero. So in this case, we're going to look. And we see that our match should be negative 2, 2. And that's just because 2 and 2 exist in the array. Um, and we're looking for the first match. So 3, if we look, we don't see a positive 3. 2, if we look, we see a negative 2. Or sorry, we see a positive complement to the negative 2, meaning that the sum of these two will be 0. So we want to return this match. And then here we have a negative 2, there's no positive 2. We have a 0, there's no other 0. Um, we have 1, there's no negative 1. And by now we already know that um, there's not going to be a match because these are all positive. And this is a sorted array. Here we get to 1. Um, we don't see any negative 1. I mean, we're already going to know pretty early that we're not going to find a match. Uh, this we won't pay attention to now. This is essentially just some testing stuff that I'll go over later. Uh, let's get right to our function. I already talked about our return type. Let's focus primarily on our input. So we're going to get a list of integers. We're going to call it list. And then we're going to build this return container. I'm calling it container because that's essentially what it is. It contains a boolean that indicates whether or not we found a match. and it and it has the value of our match if we found one and null otherwise. So this is what we're initializing our return value with. Um, no, we haven't found a match. And because of that, there's no value. So that's our default state. And we're going to return that default state if the list is null or if they're less than two items. You obviously can't have a, a match so that the sum equals 0 with only one item or no item. So that's our short circuit early return state. Then we're going to create two pointers. One we call beginning, and it starts at the beginning of the array. One we call end, it starts at the end of the array. So this is our starting position. We have our end pointer and we have our beginning pointer. Now, the essential idea here is if the sum of our two numbers from the starting point, in this case it would be 4 and negative 3, so the sum of 4 and negative 3 is positive 1, 
And if the sum is greater than zero, then we want to move our end pointer left. We want to close this distance. And this is where this name, the walls are closing in, comes from. So we have a long distance between the two, and that distance is going to get shorter and shorter. Um, because we're, we're trying to converge upon some two numbers in this array that will give us a uh, neutral zero value. And so just the opposite is true. Uh, if our sum is less than zero, we just want to move this pointer to the right because we know we have a sorted array. We said, oh, that didn't quite do it. We need fewer negative values or we need, um, you know, conversely, uh, less positive values in this case. So it, this is going to become clear with an example. So let's take this case where we have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. And we can kind of like look at it from what a naive solution might look like. The naive quadratic solution would take the first element and then look at every other one. So that's what how we can just look at this real quick. We can take negative 3 and say, okay, does negative 3 plus negative 2 equal 0? No. Negative 1 equals 0? No. 0. And we know that, okay, um, after we look, nothing in this array plus negative 3 equals 0. So we can move on. We do the same thing for negative 2. Look at everything else in the array. We don't find um, a, a complementary number so that the sum equals 0. Move on to negative 1 and we look at the rest of the array and when we hit this one we find that it's true and so we return our match. So that's the naive approach. We're going to do it a little bit differently with these two pointers. We have our beginning pointer noted as B starting at the beginning. and We have our end pointer notated as E starting at the end. And now we're just going to say okay while B is less than E meaning they haven't crossed over each other yet you know there's still a wall between them um, about that long. So while that space still exists, take the sum of the value at this beginning position and then the, the value of um, what's at this end index. Sum them. So in this case it is negative, or sorry, positive 3. So we'll just put that in there. So that's the current sum. For 6 and negative 3, the value is 3. And now we're going to say, okay, well, if the sum equals zero, set that container present value to true, indicating that we have found a match, and then just take the values at that position and return them. Um, and you will set that in the container value, and then we're just going to return the container. We're done. We found our first match. That's it. We don't need to be concerned with any others. Um, that's obviously not the case here. But our other condition here is going to be okay well if the sum is greater than zero which it is we have the sum of three then just decrement the end index so move this one down because we know that we have too much too many positive values it doesn't work there we have too many positive values we have to move that one down so we've decreased the space between these two values um, and then the other condition here is, okay, well, if the sum is less than zero, if B is less than, or sorry, if the sum here is, is less than zero, then move this one up because we have too many negative values. We need to decrease it to get closer to this middle space. Um, but that's not the case. And then this is just a safety condition. We, we meet, we say, okay, if sum equals zero, if sum is greater than zero, if sum is less than zero, this is some weird condition that really doesn't exist. I just put it in there as a safety check. Um, so okay, we did that and now we need to go back. While beginning is less than end, it still is because this space exists here. Um, take the new sum which is 5 plus negative 3, so we have 2. And does sum equal 0? No. Is sum greater than 0? Yes. So decrement the end value. So we're still moving down. Now we take beginning less than end true we have that space so add the value here um, we have 4 and we have negative 3 so we're still positive so that doesn't equal 0 and it is greater than 0 so we're gonna keep moving this one down so now we have our end all the way down here so it's still greater than the beginning we still have that space 
we're going to take the new value, 1 plus negative 3. Now we have negative 2. So something's changing. We're going to hit our other condition. They're not equal to 0. Uh, sum is not greater than 0. It's less than 0 for the first time. So we're going to do this. We're going to increment our beginning index. And this is, you know, when the walls really start to close in, this is how this pattern um, is so useful because we're still only iterating over this array once. We're still doing this in linear time as opposed to quadratic time. So we did that. We have to take our new sum. Negative 2 plus 1 is going to equal negative 1. So we're still negative. Beginning is still less than end. Uh, this new value is 1 plus negative 2, which is negative 1, which does not equal 0 which is not greater than 0, it's less than 0. We're going to increment our beginning value and now you can see what's going to happen here. We're still in this loop, um, but now we have 1 plus negative 1, which is 0. So we're going to hit this condition. We toggle our container value present to true saying, oh, we found one, and then take what's at the beginning here. This beginning index is negative 1 and then what's at the end index, which is positive 1, and then we're going to return that. So we return this value in our container. Um, so down here, you know, that would be equal to just this, basically. Um, and then present would be true. And so that's kind of what we get there. And we'll go up here and just run some of these test cases. We have a whole bunch. Uh, you can look at these yourself in the example code. Um, and they all pass. And there's just, this is just formatting, essentially. This is just uh, kind of destructuring that container value and saying, OK, um, does it match? If it matches, um, if it matches, uh, make sure that this value is there. Print that value. And so we, we pretty much get what we'd expect for all of these. Um, we have this, and it needs to be true because we see that negative 3 and 3 forms a match. So our result, um, which, well, our result is just going to be one of these container items, but we're going to, you know, up here print out result.value so it's going to say match found negative 3 3 and I'll let you go over that but essentially this solution is, is pretty robust feel free to play with it break it and have fun questions comments concerns let me know in the comments below and check out the um, if you like this check out the slinky variant the slinky variant is easier um, but it's also super powerful and anyway hope you liked it